Yesterday, superstar Chris Prather captured the PBA Raw Pullman doubles title with partner Andrew Anderson. Tonight, Prather is right back here at the World Series of Bowling, this time going it alone as he tries to win the 2021 edition of the PBA Cheetah Championship. Here in Tampa, AMF University Lanes is home to the 12th World Series of Bowling. Tonight, we crown a champion for the third of five straight days and nights at the World Series with a 2021 Cheetah Championship. Four of the world's best bowlers will compete for the title. What a great field we've got here. Marshall Kent, Anthony Simonson, Chris Prather, and Australian Sam Cooley are here. This is low man out bowling, single elimination. We start with the top four qualifiers. The low score is done. Same goes with the final three. Low score is knocked out, then a champion. Championship match with the two remaining bowlers. Here's the cool part. You'll see the eventual champ all night long. Speaking of champions, this guy, Randy Peterson here. Dave Ryan, and also joined by Kimberly Plester throughout the broadcast as well. Welcome back to the 12th World Series of Bowling here on FS1. Last year in Virginia, Cheetah Championship, a seeding round, eventually a stepladder won by Sean Rash. New format this year, single elimination. So you better bring your best right away. Speaking of bringing their best, Prather, Simonson can do that, can't they? Yeah, two major champions uh, on the telecast tonight. But before we get to that, you know why I'm so excited why? about tonight's show? No. Let me ask you this. Sure. Fastest land animal on the planet is? The cheetah. Correct. And tonight's oil pattern is? The cheetah. Correct. Now let's get to those two major champions we were talking about. Starting with uh, Anthony Simonson. You'll see him winning the 2019 Players' Championship right here. And Chip in the ninth certainly didn't hurt his cause. He had an amazing 2020 campaign without winning. But here at the Cheetah Championship, he is undefeated in match play. Chris Brather, our other major champ, he won the 2020 Tournament of Champions and captured his fourth title yesterday afternoon. Will his hot hand continue? And oh, by the way, he's never lost in a title match. Now, Dave, uh, getting back to that mm -hmm. cheetah oil pattern, uh, I think it's the most exciting oil pattern on the PBA Tour. And let's just say tonight, every player will be living on the edge. Oh, we can't wait. Great bowling ahead. Earlier, Kimberly caught up with Anthony Simonson and Chris Prater. Well, guys, you are both in a familiar spot bowling for a title once again. But, Anthony, this is the first time we've seen you on a show this World Series of Bowling. So describe what this event has been like for you this thus far. Um, you know, this week's been a, been a little bit of a grind. We started off really good making this show. Uh, struggled throughout the rest of the week. Uh, spare shooting was subpar this week, and I think that's one of the reasons why this is the only show you'll see me on. Well, we wish you luck tonight, and we'll let you get back to the lanes. And Chris, it's just the opposite for you because we saw you win the doubles championship last night. So how does this pattern help you keep that momentum going and maybe walk away with another title today? Yeah, I think it's going to be a little bit of an advantage bowling last night on the TV show. Uh, I know what the pair's kind of characteristics are, and uh, I think we're going to see some higher scores tonight. All right. Well, good luck to you as well. Thank you. I just love saying cheetah. I don't know what it is about maybe because they're such uh, majestic animals. But remember that living on the edge, the outside. I part remember of, the outside part of the lane is extremely dry. And so the players have one of two options. They could take non-reactive bowling balls and throw it straight up the outside part of the lane or take reactive equipment and throw it to the outside part of the lane. We did see some gutter balls throughout this competition. So that is in play. Get it going right early and miss it at the bottom. It could go in for zero. Hence living on the edge. Correct. And last year, Cheetah Championship in Centerville, Virginia. What happened? Sean Rash went into the channel. Let's meet our bowlers. Kegling out of Knob Hill Bowl in Yakima, Washington. This is Marshall Kent. <laughs> Ready to bowl in Tampa. <laughs> Let's get it on. Low man out. A little high. Three six up. Didn't get it far enough right. 
Rolling it out of the nerd in Las Vegas, Nevada, here's Anthony Simonson. This guy's a stud. The question is, can he get back in the winner's circle? It's been a while for Simo. Four pin. Down late. Off to a great start. With a spare ball, two cover, two go down into the pit for Marshall Kent. Bowling out of Plainfield Lanes in Plainfield, Illinois, Chris Prather. Fourth title came here yesterday, as he talked about with Kimberly a moment ago. Doubles with Andrew Anderson. This guy's a closer. 4 0 his career. TV Finals, great start to the knockout round. Rolling out of Shell Harbor 10 pin bowl in Warilla, Australia, Sam Cooley. Jason Belmonte is not the only star bowler from Australia. This guy is good. Seeks his first career title. Here tonight in Tampa. Right on the edge, like Randy said, two stands. Yeah, you can see right there where that ball was uh, two tenths of an inch from going into the gutter. Do you have a prediction on how many, if any, gutter balls we'll get tonight? No. Okay. Spare for Kent to begin his night. Bringing 10 pin to begin this frame. And a much better shot for Marshall. Sam Cooley with power. Knocks down the two pin and has his mark. Everybody needs to stay clean and stay strong in this single elimination match. Low score is done for the show. 10 pin for Marshall. Simonson and Prather both going with non reactive. And Marshall Kent, Sam Cooley using reactive. Whoa. Oh my. 479 up. Not an easy conversion here for Simonson. Sam is from New South Wales, the same state as Belmo. South of Sydney. Wow, it, it's really wiggling at that spot. That, and you know, we watched Sam bowl earlier this afternoon in match play, and when he got it to that point down the lane, tried by Simonson, it, it really came roaring back. And the last two shots he threw, he got it to the one board, and it really labored. Open frame for Simo here in the second. So we'll keep a close eye on that. Look at the max numbers to the right. Four bowlers all at once. And new format from last year. We had the seating round for all the animal pattern shows at the World Series in Centerville, Virginia. Prather. Short kit. Got a myriad of nicknames. They're all good. His game's good, Randy. His game's really good. In match play this afternoon, he was uh, in a 1-1 tie with Sean Rash and went to urethane, actually went from reactive resin and moved probably 15 or 17 boards to the right. Went really, really straight the last two games and averaged almost 260. Well, here's a, a news flash for you folks. Uh, Dave, 
Anthony Simonson just threw a 30-year-old bowling ball. Wow. How old? It, it's 30 years old. It was made in 1991. He actually bought that ball on Facebook Market uh, about a month and a half ago. There it is right there. About a month and a half ago for $200. Four pin, the question is why, Randy? Okay. Well, because it's a little less reactive than the urethane of today. So the non-reactive urethanes of today and that ball, uh, it, it kind of, that ball kind of fits right in between plastic and urethane. Specialty equipment for Simo here. Well, he, he's he, going old school. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that ball is so old that strike tracks uh, powered by Kia can't pick up the numbers. It just doesn't see it. That's old. It's like a ghost, Dave. It's a ghost ball. Adding to the intrigue of our Cheetah Championship tonight. Marshall Kent picks up his spare as we keep on cranking here. Open frame for Simonson puts him at low man right now. Prather's been outstanding. That's the first three strikes. Low score is done. You will see the eventual champ every minute of our show here tonight leading up to the final championship match. Brad Miller, Chris Vi, and en route to the show, a 300 game for Sam Cooley today. Yeah, he just changed balls already here in the third frame. And again, Getting that ball out there to that hook zone. Watch this follow through, folks. Big open hand. And then, oh, I've seen him go way farther left than that with his follow through. His goal tonight, try not to panic in big moments and stay focused. Marshall Kent told us about trying to trust the process, and this process is a very difficult split. 210. You know, it might be this TV pair, but that zone is supposed to hook. The, the bowling balls are supposed to hook from there. And I know on some pairs it came ripping back from that spot. And maybe some it has something to do with the urethane balls that Simonson and Prather are throwing down that zone. Get that ball over here and cut it. Just left of the two, cut it into the 10. Not easy, converted. Big shot. For Marshall Kent, bowling with E.J. Tackett here last night in the Coleman Roth Doubles Championship. Breather and Anderson took home the title. That was a big conversion for Kent. Look at that 30-year-old bowling ball, man. That thing is epic. I wonder how it has been preserved for that. <laughs> oh, my. Just saw the 10. Saw 10. In storage in a box. I mean, it's going to be okay, right? I mean, it had to be kept in a in a fairly um, air conditioned place where the room temperature was anywhere between 68 and 72 degrees. The blast from the past bowling ball in action tonight. Cooley, search to the channel. All oh, ten back. Brader said to us tonight, confidence is sky high. As it should be. The ball is that good coming off of a win. And he starts with a front four. And he made up his mind he was going to use your thing. He, he had played the old pattern two different ways. And uh, I think what is uh, it really spells out professional at a high level is if you look at what he did yesterday afternoon and how he played uh, that oil pattern versus how he's playing Cheetah. Simonson came in a touch high, left the four pin. Could have been a lot worse for Simo. Out of the nerd in Vegas, the bowling center. He works there, lane maintenance, running the place in addition to his practice time. Arsenal there for Marshall Kent who helped set up the NERD Bowling Center in Vegas with Anthony Simonson. Marshall lives in Vegas now. Well, he finally got that one to come around the corner. And again, 
folks. This is the number you want to watch for. That's two inches from the edge of the gutter. Remember, 39 boards across the lane at about an inch wide. The lane 60 feet from foul line to the pins. Cooley, left lane. Wow. He's locked in. Told us today he wants to win this for his late mom, Donna, who passed away February of last year of cancer. Such a difficult time for Sam. Very emotional. Describing his feelings. What it would mean to he and his family to win here. Pray there. Strike streak. Stops for Shark Kent. And the front four going. Yeah, he's just on top of that dry area and just trying to trap it into the pocket. One of the things he's been working on is that straight game. We all know he likes to hook it, but he's been working on that straighter game, and it's really paid off this week. Match one, halfway point, Randy. We're seeing some superstars taking center stage tonight. Lots more to come. Remember, three move on, one does not. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Mortgage rates are historically low. Save money at rate.com today. And by Kia. Introducing the all-new Sorrento, the world's first storytelling machine. All right, Randy, tonight's Flow Bowling Tournament highlight. Lots to recap to see how we got to our final four. Well, EJ Tackett coming in was the number one seed, but uh, he struggled against Chris Five. Chris Five would go up against that man right there, Sam Cooley. Did I mention Sam bowled a 300 game in game three mm -hmm. of this five game match? He took down Chris Five, three to two. Rash and Prather go at it. And this would only go four. Again, Prather making that big move with the non reactive bowling balls. You can see it right there. And I mean, he really mowed him over the last two games. KO the defending champ. Cooley, Simonson, Kent, and Prather survive. A couple sweeps en route. Simonson over Nick Pate. Marshall Kent over young star AJ Johnson. So far, Simonson low man, but not by much, just by one pin. Over Marshall Kent right now. Winner will survive. Off to the next round, our guaranteed rate spare of the game. It was the 210. What a pickup here for Marshall Kent. Big one, Randy, early. Yeah, because uh, it also kept him ahead of Simonson by one. So that was a huge pickup right there by Marshall Kent. Guaranteed rate. Mortgage rates are historically low. Save money at rate.com today. The spare of the game. Simonson. Oh, 10 back on that left lane. Crunches the 1 3 pocket. Third place with EJ yesterday. But he told us today that competing on TV so recently will help him with a flow tonight. Feeling ready. Birch with the channel gets the tap oh. on number 10. Down it goes. Sweep the leg, Daniel. Watch this pit action. It looked like the head pin threw another pin into the 10. No mercy for the 10 pin. Brother. Yes.
Sam Cooley has been cool. Looking good so far. Tries here for the turkey in his sixth frame. Sits in second right now. Ooh. This is the pocket this time. And again, you see the ball labor that outside part of the lane where it's not supposed to. So, you know, it's another micro adjustment where the players have to do something to get the ball to come around the corner when it gets to that spot. Or just change to non reactive and move right. Seventh for Campbell for his turkey. You better believe it. Marshall Kent is feeling it. Check this out, folks. Oh, oh! <laughs> what a great look. Nice spare there by Cooley. It was good cover. As his mark stays clean. All the bowlers unanimously, Randy, told us today they like the idea of being out there with the three others. It's not just one-on-one. -on -one. It's just don't be last. Right. You don't have to win this game. You mm -hmm. just you just don't want to be last. And it makes players feel like uh, they don't have to go all in, in that first game. Simonson, however, he needs to strike here. Seventh frame makes for the double. That has it. Pulls to within two of Cooley. And that's a big shot there in the seventh for Simonson. He is low score right now. Well, actually, cool is I switch things up a little bit. So Simo, 24 under right. No, you had it right. I had it right. Let's look at the yellow line. So yellow line means current bowler. There right. we go. Oh, peeled off of the spot nicely right there. There you go. 12 out to about the half board. Not for the faint of heart. But for professionals at this level, they're used to playing all 39 boards. Seventh for Preddy, looks for a double, has it, wow! Those pins had no chance against Chris Prather. Little 20 mile an hour shot there by Chris. So, he talked about his rev rate, Randy, too, to us being the lowest of the four, but he's okay with that. Doesn't matter. He's got mm -hmm. such a good touch, and he's got plenty of, of revolutions and power. And, you know, from that angle, you don't need a lot of rev rate. See that bowling ball that Simonson's using? Right. I've got a great story about that ball. Oh! Massive messenger. I'm going to try to tell it as quick as I can. The name of the ball is a grenade. The inside weight block is in the shape of a grenade. Okay. When we used to travel to Japan and guys would bring those bowling balls over, we'd get through, we'd go through customs and they put it through the x-ray machine and they wouldn't let the balls in. Because it looked like a because grenade. Because it looked inside. like a grenade until they oh. finally figured out and it was explained to them, since none of us spoke Japanese, we needed help, that it was a bowling ball and not a, anything inside that was harmful. Whoa! Goes to the channel again and hustles back to the one Three pocket for another strike. How about that? Mm. Hey, Dave, remember at the top of the show when we were doing our Live it on the edge. There you go. Thank you. We'll you bring that up a few times. Tonight. So glad you were listening to me. Occasionally. Pray they're trying to stay hot. Not just that. Well, he's all but locked himself in now. Cooley's got some work to do. Eighth frame. Must strike. Works on a strike. Needs it. And oh, oh no. the seven pin on a really good looking shot from Sam Cooley. Unlucky. Prather is locked to move on now. All he needs is a good count in the ninth and tenth frame. Marshall Kent, red hot, looks for a five bagger. And yes. Let me tell you how fortunate that was. That was late. 
Let me tell you how fortunate this was right here because this could have been a mess. And instead, topples the eight. Yeah, Sam Cooley's going to need a lot of help here. And I get that maybe if Prather did open ninth and tenth and Cooley strikes out that he could possibly go around Prather. John, can I have a re-rack, please? Thank you. I don't see that happening, especially with the line that Chris is playing. And so Cooley max score is 227. Prather's already at 239. Excuse me, 249. Max score for Kent, 256 and 245 for Simonson. Simo asks for and gets a re-rack from John Ware. Right lane, Simo. Oh. Really good shot. Ten pin stands. Well, every shot on television makes somebody happy and and that made that man feel that he now has a chance to go around Simonson. And there's not a thing Anthony can do about it. Foundation frame time for Curry. Yes. Trip 10 down it goes. Sam's been staying with Jacob Buttriff the last couple because months to avoid going back home to Australia because if you do, you're going to stay in quarantine for four weeks and pay for your hotel, which is about $3,000. Well, it's the whole quarantine. It's the, it's the hotel. It's the food. Everything. It, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's the water you use, the electricity, everything that you use is all part of that. I mean, if you brush your teeth, you got to pay for it, I think. So good for Jacob to allow Sam to be a roomie for a while. Sam plans to go back to Australia probably after the U.S. Open in April. Prather's been really good this game. Looking for help. You better believe it. Prather moving on. He'll get some help with a 10 pin across the deck. He's a lock now. Good to go for the next round. Simonson has to strike out to force Cooley to double and get good count. Three move on. One is done. Who's it going to be? See, I, want, I don't want that to strike. I want that to strike, not that. He liked the shot on the right lane much better. Ken has not won on tour since 2017. Is tonight his night? Maybe so. Looking good. Just absolutely obliterates the 10. And Marshall Kent will move on. 15 to 1. That's yeah, crossing a few boards. He wants this one and doesn't get it. Four pin stands for Simon. With a spare ball right down the middle about yep. a million miles an hour. Mm -hmm. As Marshall Kent will move on. Just keeping it on the lane and getting count was all Marshall was doing. can do now sit and watch 2017 Oklahoma Open Grand Casino Resort last time Marshall Kent was in the winner's circle off to a great start in our cheetah championship four start only three make the next round low score is out it's not this guy. Oh. 
A strike a nine. He'll end Simonson's night. Anthony from the bench. Could just watch and hope. Sam Cooley has a strike. He delivers in a big moment. Nine pins, he'll advance. End the night of Anthony Simons. Got to have nine. Gets ten and advances. Good shots. Come on. You're right, Sam. Real good shots there. And you see the three scores. Kent, 56. Cooley's going to shoot 227 with a strike. And Chris Prather, 257. They will all advance, and we'll do it all over again. Simonson, such a nice start to 2021 with a finals appearance at the players and then finishing second at the Tournament of Champions. But a disappointing World Series of Bowling 12 for Simo. Anthony Simonson's night is over. Who's left? Cooley, Prather, and Marshall Kent. Top two advance to the title match. More on the way from Tampa, Florida. All right, Randy, let's flash back. Thunder Bowl Lanes, Allen Park, Michigan, outside Detroit. 2009 PBA Canadian Championship. Bill O'Neill won his first career title. He's currently leading the Canadian standings heading into tomorrow. We might see him tomorrow if he advances to the Final Four on FS1 at 8 Eastern as the 12th World Series of Bowling continues. The start of a tremendous career for Bill O'Neill. As we check the 2021 guaranteed rate PBA Tour World Series of Bowling scheduled tonight, the Cheetah Championship, Chameleon and Scorpion to follow. So far, Randy, tremendous effort for Prather and Marshall Kent. One pin separate the two with a great first game. Yeah, and Sam Cooley does just enough to go around Simonson. Simonson, a couple of uh, taps there uh, in the middle part of the game, and then uh, comes up light to his second shot in the 10th that gave Sam Cooley the opening. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see if there's any adjustments made by Sam because I don't think uh, 220 advances in this next game. Let's recap to this point, World Series of Bowling. What a opener in the World Championship. Tampa Tom himself, Tom Doherty, a winner. He really was able to make a bowling ball do Yes. what the other players couldn't get theirs to do and, and that ball reaction and then him acing some brilliant shots and then one of the biggest breaks I've ever seen in major championship history went his way. And then Chris Prather and Andrew Anderson took advantage of a huge break given to them by Kyle Troop and Jesper Svensson and they carried some nice breaks to victory in the Roth Holman doubles. Let's update our bowling fans on the Kia PBA playoff point list. Kyle Troop is number one right now. Anthony Simons and Chris Prather action tonight are top six among our great bowlers here. Uh, 17th, 17th is that? Is that a? There's That's something not wrong. A typo. There's something wrong with that. That's the sixth time That's, player of the year. Wait. Jason that, Belmonte. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, Sean Rash right on the bubble, and then uh, Jason Belmonte right underneath him in 17th. We've had some expert analysts on our broadcast here from Tampa so far, joined as well by EJ Tackett tonight. Who? He'll be in the booth. PBA superstar EJ, thanks for joining us tonight. What are you looking forward to most in the next round? Well, Dave, uh, what I really noticed uh, that round was playing straight with the urethane definitely was a better choice for controlling the pocket. 
But what I think the most important thing, because we have two guys throwing reactive bowling balls, is going to be timing. Get the ball to the gutter, to the hook that Randy talked about too early, really easy to go through the nose and leave a split. Get the ball there too late, and we see a lot of two-pin combinations that we saw Marshall and Sam leave that block. So I think timing for the two guys throwing the reactive resin is going to be the most important thing. But if Chris Prather can continue to get the tin, get the tin pin out and carry the corners, he's going to be really hard to beat. And if that doesn't happen, EJ, I mean, how quickly do the guys that are using urethane get out of it? Or Chris Prather, the only one left using urethane, how quickly does he get out of that and then jump in and start carving the front part of the lane? Well, considering uh, Chris was able to get the urethane to strike a lot earlier against Sean Rash, I think he might continue to stay into the urethane as long as possible. I know he's going to be able to control the pocket, but like I said, getting those corner, corner pins out are going to be the most difficult thing for him. And if he goes through a couple and leaves them, uh, he might middle of this game. It's possible to see Chris Paler get into uh, reactive resin bowling balls. All right, EJ, come join us in the booth after all the right. break. All right, look forward to I'm looking hearing forward to it as well. EJ Tackett and his expert analysis. First round is over. Chris Prather rolled a 257. Marshall Kent, a spectacular 256. They both advance along with Cooley to the next round. The online graphics you see tonight, including the ball tracer, are courtesy of Clutch. Bowling, as always, looking great. Three survive. Cooley, Prather, Marshall Kent, top to advance to the title match tonight here in Tampa. Well, you want to bowl at a high level, folks? Well, try this at home. Play 25 and then throw it up five. You got to be able to play all the angles, right, EJ? Absolutely, Randy. And what's what's the key to that? I mean, what what? I mean, you're a guy that's one of the most talented players out here. What is it that enables you to be able to do all of that? Well, it's definitely uh, being able to vary your speeds uh -huh. and uh, vary your hand at the bottom of the swing. Uh -huh. You'll be able to rotate a little bit when you're playing a little bit further left and really be able to roll the ball end over end when you're playing straighter. And your doubles partner here, he can do that, right? Absolutely. We've seen Marshall win playing straight. We've seen him lofting the left gutter. Um, he's kind of in the middle right now. All right, guys, Marshall Kent starts the next one. Oh, goodness, that took a left turn. Didn't even go Brooklyn. That was the Bronx. Staten Island. Well, that was way left to target, and um, there's not enough oil in the middle part of the lane to keep that from going where it went. And, yeah, Marshall, he knows it. So you still have to get it to that spot down lane. Absolutely. Uh, and like like I said, um, we have to, uh, timing's the most important thing for these guys throwing the reactive resin bowling balls. Getting to that hook at the correct time. Sam Cooley, guys, on the right lane is locked in. So that's a good five boards right of where Marshall was at the break point. Yeah, and, and misses left on this pattern. Small misses look very large. Yeah. It's a nice cover on the one three. On the 136, which you don't shoot a lot of. You don't yeah, often yeah. see that left by uh, high level professionals. No. Jay Tackett joining us in the booth here. Randy Peterson, Dave Ryan, and Kimberly Preston, our great crew in Tampa, watching Chris Prather in action again. DJ, we talked with Chris about winning last night, pulling again here tonight. Of course, much different look, pattern, different look, but got to feel comfortable, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, coming off a win, your confidence level is going to be super high. Um, Chris has bowled great all week. He's uh, just barely missed the World Championship show, won the doubles last night, made the show here tonight. Um, the confidence has to be boiling out of him at this point. I'm going to use that line, boiling confidence. Write that down. Thanks, EJ. You're welcome. Anytime. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> He's a giver. You know, EJ, I thought one thing that was interesting about Prather this afternoon in match play was he actually kind of did the opposite of what we normally see. In, and that is that typically we see players start with non-reactive with the urethane balls to try to blend them out a little bit. Maybe the lanes are a little tricky to start. And then when they kind of get blended, then 
they jump into the reactive resin. He, he went the exact opposite. He started with reactive resin and then jumped into the non-reactive late. Yeah, and I think that has to do with uh, knowing that Sean Rash hasn't thrown urethane the entire time on this pattern. So I think he was trying to set up the lanes for himself to be able to get into the reactive resin ball, be left of Sean, and kind of create problems for him, and it didn't work out. And Things he went are working the other out way. here, guys, for Sam Cooley. Late tap on the 10. That looked pretty good in the left lane. Yeah, the 10 pin looked like it got hit by a taser. <laughs> from EJ, confidence. Overwhelming right now for Prey. They're trying to stay hot. It's a high shot. 6-10 up for Chris. And it looks like we've seen a lot of early hook out of the uh, urethane ball from Chris, and that might create a problem where he has to move left, and then we might start seeing some carry issues from him. Let's go to Kimberly Moore and Marshall Kent. Thanks, Dave. So Marshall and his father, James Kent, always had a special bond. And to keep his memory alive, Marshall had a special set of dog tags made that he wears around his neck daily. Now we asked him if he takes them off when he competes, and he said no, but he does tuck them in his shirt. When we asked why, he laughed and said, because they kept coming up and smacking him in the face. Kimberly, it's such a nice tribute to Jim. That was Jim. That was Jim's thumbprint. His thumbprint on the dog tag. And as Kimberly said, it's with Marshall all the time. Connects he and his father after losing Jim last fall due to cancer. EJ, Marshall Kent, first ball in the left lane, misses the head pin running away left. This time goes high again. What's the move he has to make? He has to get the ball closer to the gutter. I know what he's feeling. He's seeing a little bit of carry down, down lane, and he's trying to make the ball hook, trying to make it strike. And when you do that, you get a little elbow in it, and uh, the miss left looks really big now. Oh, that's gonna go. The other star from Australia, Sam Cooley. Looking for a tackle. Oh, wow. There it goes. Late little smack on the 10. Down you go. I'm not sure if that's your attempt at an Australian accent or not. But I need I've got a much some, better one than that. It's a bit of work, my friend. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's a three-bagger. You know mine. A two-hander from down under. I mean, your, your regular one's not bad. All right, Prather back on the strike train, finally, after three frames. And Marshall's pretty good on this right lane, but it's that left lane. It's going to be very interesting to see his next shot on the left lane, EJ. And that shot that Prather just threw, it looked like he actually moved a little bit right, got a little closer to the hook, closer to the gutter, and just threw it a little bit harder. Right lane for Kent. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Another good break. Man, what's going on with, with that right lane and rolling the 10 like that? No idea, but that four pin sure is happy to get over there, isn't it? Marshall said it was tonight. Really hoped he would have won more after his last title in Oklahoma in 2017. Feels like he's bowling maybe his best right now in years. Trying to come through tonight. Won't be easy against this guy. Sam Cooley, EJ, is mowing them over. It looks to me Sam was able to strike out in the 10th, get that win over Simo or, or advance to this match, and confidence. Confidence goes a long way, and it looks like he's got all of it right now. He's getting faster. Absolutely. Prather's getting faster. Yeah, that that if, backswing went up, and mm -hmm. he's heaving it now. And if we notice the first game, he, he was crossing the arrows about the five board, and it looks like he's about three to four now. Looks like he's moved a board or so to the right and just started throwing it a little bit harder. So we'll see how that plays out for him the rest of the game. That was 21 and a half miles an hour. It's one of the fastest shots I've seen this season, it not being a spare shot. Yeah, and I was watching it uh, the first game. Chris was throwing it at right around 20, so he's definitely ramped up the speed this time. Uh oh, much oh, better course. shot. Oh, much of better. Yeah, all, every time. <laughs> much better shot for nine. Yes, you're real familiar familiar with that. I mean, you you, you know you you go you, you make a bad shot. It goes. Brilliant. You get one in a little bit. Goes to the okay. All right, and then you finally pure one, and it's a ring ten. Almost a hundred percent of the time right? that happens. Calmly, quietly, this guy's been steady and continues. Man, his pin carry looks pretty good. Yeah, and, and when you start seeing pins fly around like Sam's have, it tells me that his hand is in the right spot and he has the right ball in his yeah. hand. 
the core is doing the correct thing to the pins. Off the ring and 10 pin, there's the single pin square conversion for Marshall. So th that was the problem with, with towards the end of my career that my core wasn't doing the right thing. Well, I have no comment. <laughs> it's okay, you can comment. If that's, what you, you if, that's what, comment. if that's what you think, Randy, then go ahead and keep thinking it. Well, I, I didn't know what it was until you said that, and now I, <laughs> I'm almost positive it was my core. Uh, I don't think it was the core in the bowling ball, though. I think it was a different core. Fifth frame, Prather oh. looking for the turkey. He didn't like it, but a trip 10, down it goes. Only one. In the end, will be our champion. One will be eliminated from this round. Three stand for now. We'll wrap up this round next from Tampa. Welcome back, bowling fans, to the 12th World Series of Bowling, AMF University Lanes. Here in Tampa, Florida, Dave Ryan alongside E.J. Tackett joining us in the booth. Randy Peterson, Hall of Famer, Kimberly Pressler, main level with us as well here tonight. Bowl anywhere, anytime with a new PBA Bowling Challenge mobile game for iPhone, iPad, and Android. Head to PBA.com to check out the game that more than 29 million people have downloaded so far. It's continuously updated with new ball options, new venues, new competitions, challenges, and in-game rewards. Download the free app today. And for more information, visit PBA.com. 29 million sounds like a lot. That is a lot, Randy. And a lot of great competition here, EJ, tonight. Cooley is in the lead. Chris Prather is second right now. Marshall Kent needs to rally second half of this second match to stay on the show. Four pin for Cooley. What do you think of Sam's game so far, EJ? Uh, uh, he's looked really, really solid so far. Um, there was a couple of shots there in the first match we thought eh, maybe he is, uh, you know, doesn't have an, that much experience in these types of situations, but he pulled himself together in the last half of that game, and uh, he's really put it to these guys the first half of this game. Marshall Kent needs to get things going here. Oh, good shot. Bring a 10 pin. Two great shots in a row from Marshall. Mm. And yep. Randy just goes back to uh, that timing, getting that ball to the hook yep. at the correct time. Yeah, it almost looks like it's pushing a little too long down the lane. Mm -hmm. He needs to be, to me, it looks like he needs to be just slightly steeper with his angles uh -huh. so that ball hooks off that dry a little bit sooner and a little bit sharper. But that's really easy to say sitting up here. Sure. Maybe that's why he's down there and I'm up here. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you still have a chance on uh, Chameleon and Scorp Scorpion uh, tomorrow and the next day. I do. I do. Tomorrow I'm well, going to bowl. Only player to make every cut here at the World Series of Bowling, do you know? Uh, from what I've been told, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I, it's actually uh, two years in a row for me that I've made all the cuts. That's you pretty say. awesome, EJ. I've, I've had quite a bit of success in this particular event. Um, haven't won in this World Series since 2017, though, so I need to... Uh, yeah, but that was a big one. It was. That was the uh, uh, Scorpion. I, I uh, bowled Belmo on that one. Uh, 2016 oh, was the was World It was 2016 when, yep. when your dad was there. Yep. That was awesome. Wow. Speaking wow. of awesome. Yeah. Ten pins mowed down. They had no chance against that perfect shot in the one-three pocket from Prather. When Chris Prather sees it the right way, like he has the last three shots, he might be able to throw all of them. Yeah, and and EJ, the one thing he told us is that he's been working really hard on his straighter game. We all know how he likes to get in and slow hook it, you know, and use his hand and do some things to the rotation. But he says he's been working real hard on that straight game. No seven ten. Wow. How about a strike? For Marshall Kent, desperately needed that one. Latter stages of the match, trying to survive here against Prather and Cooley. Other finishers just off the show. Chris Fye, Sean Rash, the defending champ, and good telestration there, Randy, on EJ Tech. Brad Miller continuing his quest, guys, for his first career title. Some great bowlers out there.
Let's check out this. Now we talked about his follow through going so far to the left. And here's why. Watch what his hand does at release. See how it just folds and that actually pulls the arm a little bit to the left side of the head. That wrist unfolds and that hand turns over and it pulls the thumb left of his ear. It's definitely very unique. There's only a couple of guys out here that, that throw it like that. And the only one that other one that comes to mind is uh, Anthony Lavery Spar. They have uh, the role is is definitely different than everyone else's, and when they do match up, they strike a ton. Yeah. Marshall is kind of in that that area of play now where he has to strike on every ball to have any chance. Yeah, you have to think that at this point. Yeah. Both guys are bowling in the in the 270s if they strike out. And uh, Marshall is definitely on his last leg. He ha he has no other option but to throw strikes from here on out. I mean, as a former player, when I got into the situation, that was the only thing I thought of. I said, well, okay, I mean, there's no pressure now because it's strike or go home. And the only chance I have is if I strike out. And, and so it was almost like less pressure. Yeah, you, your main focus is applying the pressure back on your opponents. Cooley looks for another strike here, guys. Gets another one left lane. And another reason why I think Sam Cooley is in the correct ball right now is we've seen Marshall not get it to the hook as quick, where Sam's ball is kind of in that, what we would call that little muddy zone, where there's a lot of oil down lane, but his ball is still hooking and still getting to the pocket the correct way and throwing pins everywhere and uh, not leaving those corners. Prater, red hook. Four pin this time. You heard him say it. A little hard. 21.3 miles an hour. It was firm. And watching that shot, it, it looked like he just barely missed it at the bottom of the swing as well. Even though his rev rate still showed um, pretty high, it just looked different off yeah. of his hand than the other ones did. Something else that's different with Prather is he's now using a spare ball. Yeah, for a long time he used uh, whatever ball he was throwing his strikes with, which he, he really kills his hand at the bottom of the yeah. swing. So he was able to do that, but um, I think he wanted to just eliminate the reactive resin hooking just that little bit that it does. Oh, you, you did it again. All the way across Brooklyn. A non-strike does in Marshall Kent. We have to think that at this point, um, this kind of does Marshall in. Yep. The only chance he has is back-to-back -back opens from Sam or something crazy happened with, with Prather. But Prather's throwing so hard and so, sh uh, so straight that I don't see him. Safe. It's very safe. It's very safe. Yeah. Tough left lane for Marshall tonight. Cooley. Good looking shot. Seven pin stands here for Sam. That's the first time we've seen Sam's ball not strike from I know, that right? spot. But again, he's in the position where he's just trying to hit the pocket. You're yeah. trying to, you're just trying to fill your frames. You're trying to throw a really good shot and fill frames. Covers the double wood, but a spare really does him no good at this point. And watching the first game, I would have expected Marshall to be doing what Sam has done this game. Um, and they've kind of reversed where Sam's ball ball look, didn't look very good the first game and Marshall's looked good yeah. and uh, they, they flipped. Yep. I would agree with that. Absolutely. It's and it's all left lane for Marshall. And then unfortunately a couple of shots on the right lane when he when he did make a good shot. Well, both lanes, he left that ring 10. So that didn't help his cause any. Yeah. And the, the world championships and doubles that I bowled yesterday, uh, I just felt like it was really, really hard to get the corners out. And I think Prather's proving that Strader is greater right now on this particular pattern. He's had so many times it looks like, you know, he wasn't going to strike and the pins just fell over. So, again, I think barring any carry issues, Chris Prather is going to be really, really hard to beat. Some great numbers that are brought to you by Specto and our strike track. Also, uh, by Lane Talk, and for more great numbers, uh, visit lanetalk.com. It's a great, a great app to get you on to bigger and better bowling ways. Lots of great stuff there. Sam Cooley is crushing it.
Dave, I'm going to, I need to EJ for a second. So we're going to move to the title match, and you have to pick a winner. Uh, and so I'm going to put you on the spot before you go. You got Cooley or Prather. Who do you take and why? Well, past, I have to take Chris Prather. Um, he won yesterday. Yeah. Again, I said he's boiling confidence right now. He has been for two years. Going back to what you said, he's never lost in a title match. Maybe that changes today, but I would not bet against it. Okay. Sam Cooley, I don't. I think he's maybe bold for one, one or two titles ever in his career. Um, I'm not really sure. He's only made a handful of shows, maybe. He just doesn't have as much experience. So yeah, he's, in, he's in this never bold for a title. He's okay. one and two in his career on TV entering tonight. Yeah. Okay. okay so um, you know, I have to. I have to take Chris Prather. It's he's doing the the safe thing. Um, Cooley could get in trouble. You know, it's going to be way easier for him to throw it in the gutter. It's going to be way easier for him to go through the nose. Um, Chris is definitely going to hit the pocket way easier than than, uh, than Sam is. I mean, Sam's doing it really well right now, but um, that could all change. We saw it flip with Marshall from game one to game two, so we just have to wait and see. All right, prediction from EJ. This guy, Chris Prather, to take home another title. Sam Cooley guy's not been on TV since 2017. That's been a long time. And he's bowled really well here tonight. His one TV win prior, 2016 PBA Players Championship. He almost beat Jesper Svensson. And lost to Graham Fock. Placed third. Lost to Jesper in Reno, 2017. Cheetah Championship, his last TV appearance before tonight. You know, Typically, when we watch a lot of urethane go down the lane, or, or at least from one player, what, it, what, what I end up seeing is uh, it, it looks nice, it looks nice, and all of a sudden it starts bailing down lane. And that's typically when players get out of that. But what I think Chris is going to do is instead of getting out of that, he's going to go to maybe a different one, move right, and use that, that push as hold, and just kind of move his target left. Yeah, it's something. And trap it more. Yeah, he definitely could do that. Um, or he could move right and use a little bit more of the hook yeah. on the gutter. EJ, thanks for joining us. We appreciate the expert analysis from the PBA superstar. No problem, guys. I, I really enjoy being up here with you guys and hopefully do it again sometime. Great awesome. job, EJ. Thank you. Cool eight Prather, title match coming up from Tampa. The 12 PBA World Series of Bowling. All right, RP, let's update the bracket. Pretty good numbers from Prather, a 257 and 236. Sam Cooley, a 225 and 258. Those two are set to go head to head in the championship match. Gonna be fun to watch that one. Kimberly Preston joined now by Marshall Kent. Thanks, Dave. So Marshall, it looked like you had that right lane figured out, not so much on the left lane. What happened? <laughs> that one's on me. I just couldn't get myself to throw it right quick enough. No, I mean, when you're bowling on something like this, the gutter looks like it's 10 feet wide, so I didn't want to be that guy to throw in the gutter on TV. So, um, But I changed my eye line a little bit, and it worked out for a couple shots. But then I kind of scooted back to the old eye line on that last one, and I was like, oh, that's not what we were looking before. And that it is what it is. But, um, you know, I, I took the positives out, and we're going to go forward. Well, the World Series of Bowling is not over for you because uh, you still have the chameleon. You got a chance to make tomorrow's show, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's going to be some tough matches, but um, we're just going to try to do the same thing we did today and grind through and just see what happens. Well, it seems like you have found your stride, and I see that you are wearing your dog tags. You took yeah. them out of your shirt so they didn't hit you up in the face again. <laughs> so your dad is watching over you. You've made two shows in a row, yeah. and you have a chance to make a third. What's that like? Yeah, I, it's been awesome. You know, it's, it's kind of nice to be bowling well again. And, um, you know, I like to jokingly say when I have this out, he's kind of hitting me in the face. He's like, don't do that. So, <laughs> um, but, you know, we got another shot tomorrow. That's all we can ask for. So we'll just see what happens and go from there. All right. Well, best of luck to you tomorrow. All right. Thank you so much. Kimberly and Marshall, thanks. You just know Marshall Kent is going to be in, in the winner's circle pretty soon, right? Yeah, I mean, you knock on the door enough times and somebody opens it or you open it for yourself. And, I mean, he's too good of a player not to. So, uh, I think right now for Marshall, it's just, you know, continuing to stay with the process. And 
Uh, you know, his coach Mike Jazz now and him have worked out a pretty nice routine, and I think it's just a matter of time before Marshall uh, cracks the winner's circle again. About 24 hours between last night's victory with Andrew Anderson in the Holman Roth doubles competition, Chris Prather is trying to win again here. Sam Cooley trying for his first career title. Randy, it's his first TV appearance in four years, and he's looking great so far. Well, I'll tell you what, the only similarity that I see uh, are the first two numbers, and that's age and years as a professional. But, you know, E.J. Tackett touched on it when he said that uh, Chris Prather has been red hot for the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, uh, a winner yesterday, uh, he's got a shot at winning in back-to-back -back, uh, shows here at the World Series of Bowling 12. And he's a major championship winner. And that was 2020. That was last year Tournament of Champions. Chris has got uh, nothing but confidence uh, running through his veins right now. And I can tell you from experience that confidence is probably about 80% of it. And, you know, all these guys out here, uh, all these players are talented. They're physically talented. But it's the ones that have the confidence. And then uh, th that thing that sits on the shoulders, the ones that have the, the smarter brains, the, the, the moxie. I mean, those are the guys that you see week in and week out on uh, on TV in, in the televised finals. You put EJ on the spot to predict the winner. Who do you think takes home the title tonight? You know, Sam Cooley's a sentimental favorite uh, for a number of reasons. Um, but, you know, the, the, the safe money is betting on Prather. Uh, and for all the reasons that EJ Tackett said, he's playing that line where it's so hard to get into trouble. Chris has got all the confidence in the world coming off of that win with Andrew. Um, so, the safe money is Chris Prather, but I'm going with the underdog, Sam oh. Cooley. You heard the prediction from the Hall of Famer, Sam Cooley, to win his first career PBA Tour title. Sunday, the best season ever continues on Fox as the NASCAR Cup Series rolls into Atlanta, where every turn is its own test. You can catch all the action for the Folds of Honor, Quick Trip 500 at 3 Strong Fox, and anywhere on the Fox Sports app. Next from Tampa, we crown a champion. Cheetah style. Will it be Cooley? Will it be Prather? Head to head. Title match is on the way. Ready to resume. World Series of Bowling, number 12 from here in Tampa. Championship match. The stage is set. Brather, Cooley, head to head. Kimberly, joined by the finalists. Well, guys, we're heading into the final match, and you guys seem to have figured out these lanes. You're bowling very well. Chris, I'm going to ask you are you going to make any changes coming into this match? Uh, no, not really. I think my game plan is pretty solid. Uh, I was hoping that I'd make them harder for uh, Sam and the other guys curving the lane, but Sam's pretty much figured it out as well, so I think it's going to be a pretty good game. All right, well, good luck to you. Thank you. And Sam, you were one win away from winning your first ever PBA Tour title. What would it mean to win here at the World Series of Bowling? Right now, I'm just trying to treat it as just another game. I'm trying to keep it as simple as that. All right, a man, a few words. Good luck to you in the finals. Thank you. He's focused. I mean, he's trying to keep it nice and simple as we take a look at all-time cheated championships. Norm Duke, I'm not sure I've ever heard of that guy. Who is that guy? <laughs> the wee Just Iceman. a legendary Hall of Famer, that's all. Yeah. Anthony, Sean Rash won it last year. Anthony Pepe, I think he shot like 296. I think he shot 296 or something like that. 295, 295. Yep, I was close. Hey. Here we go, guys. Cooley, Prather, head to head. And Randy, this World Series event is awesome. So many different disciplines for our great bowling fans out there. The long form, 56 games to get to the show for the World Championship won eventually by Tom Doherty. Mm -hmm. Then the doubles, complete change and switch. And now the three animal patterns back to back to back nights with a single elimination format. Our fans get it all, don't they? Yeah, they really do. And I think it really, uh, really shows. Uh, what a talent EJ Tackett is by oh, that looked reminiscent of Marshall Kenshaw. It, it really shows EJ's talent to be able to make every cut um, and the only player to do so here at the World Series 
um, is, is a, a testament to just how good he is. Pretty good analyst, too, in the booth, I thought. I thought he was awesome. Did a great job. Uh, can we not have him in the booth again because <laughs> I need my job? <laughs> Belmo, Marshall Holman, E.J. Tackett. Been great to have our guest commentators. Single pin spare conversion, no problem there for Sam. Hey, Dave, uh, hear me out. Sure. If Sam has the same problem on that left lane that we saw that we saw Marshall Kent have, mm -hmm. he is not going to win this game. Cool. Okay. He's not going to win this title. All right. Got to figure out the left lane. Randy said it. Let's see if Sam does it. Singles, 3-0. Yesterday, well, the doubles win with Andrew Anderson in the Roth Holman Doubles Championship. Right lane, that's a high shot. 3-6 up. Chris told us today that he told Andrew right before the championship match in the doubles event here yesterday, look, I'm undefeated in championship matches. So we got this. And it worked out pretty well. You know what Andrew Anderson told him when they were striking and winning? Andrew Anderson looked at him and said, former player of the year. <laughs> right. It's a great right banter going back and forth. Chris and Andrew have a celebration plan, but not until after this event, of course. There was a foul a moment ago. Yeah, we're being told that he actually fouled on that spare. Oh, so, that's big. So that's eight, that's, that's big. Eight, eight out. Let's take a look. Uh, that is not a foul. Sorry. Unless I'm sorry, we're being told now that the video got there too late and that he indeed fouled. Officially a foul. We know that. And eight out on that frame for Prather. And you can see just how bad it affected him when he came up and just slammed 10 in the pit on the next shot. I mean, and that's because of just the mental state that Prather is in, and that's due to the success and, and how well he's bowling out on this tour. I mean, it just didn't even phase him. He just gets up and just 10 back. That's impressive to me, Randy. There's a lot of people would be really thrown off by that moment. Cooley, right lane. You better believe it. 60 feet to success for the Aussie as he crunches the 1-3 pocket. You know, back in my day, you couldn't wait to bowl a non-winner for a title because you just knew that it was uncharted water for them. And, I mean, Prather's got to be feeling the same way. I mean, that's why EJ Tackett predicts, predicted Prather to win this game. That's why anybody with any sense would take Chris Prather to win this title. But you predicted Sam Cooley would win. No, I, I didn't predict. I picked. You picked. Yeah, I, because I, lo I love underdogs. All right. Me too. All right, left lane. Randy, talk to us about how important this is for Sam. And yeah, that looked pretty good. Back to the foul from Prather. Randy, let's check it out. So he's shooting his spare. Remember, folks, you got to stay behind the foul line. I mean, uh, that's pretty close. Contact, though. Yep. Contact. Yep. Foul. He tried to move it back as quickly as he could, but... Let's see if that oh. comes back to haunt him. Double wood here, 2-8. I mean, look how fast he's bringing it right here, folks. Come on. Almost 22 miles an hour. That's the average speed of a, Jesus, a spare shot. You know, I think yesterday he was around 18, maybe 18 and a half, wow. playing that deep inside line. And it may not sound like a lot, four miles an hour, but it is. That's a huge difference. And that shows you the versatility of Chris Prather's game. Last year plus, brilliant. Won the TOC, Fairlawn, Ohio. <sighs> TV show, Players' Championship. Won the Strike Derby and King of the Lanes non-tour title events. But still, a winner there. One of the hottest bowlers on tour, to be certain. 
PBA playoffs 2019. Portland, Maine, Bedlam. Packed house that night. Sam Cooley told us tonight, Randy, about the loss, as we talked about, of his mother, Donna, last year. And in her honor, she was a big gardener. He's continued that when he's home in Australia. After quarantine and being away from Australia during the start of COVID, he was back for a while and whipped the garden into shape. Really helps connect Sam to his mom. Really means a lot to him. So does tonight. So does that shot. Wow. Yeah, this would be uh, some achievement for Sam after what he's been through the last year. He even said that Jason Belmonte helped him get all the paperwork needed to come out and compete this season, this 2021 season. Um, but this is the biggest moment of his professional career, and he has to somehow stay focused on the job at hand and not let any other distractions in. 300 game against Chris Vi. Round of eight, as we talked about in our broadcast tonight, to get to this point. Fifth frame looks for a four-bagger, trying to stay hot at 42. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just get it out to that spot where there's friction, and he knows the ball will return if his hand is good. And look at that. You see how that hand cups underneath and then rotates, and now you can see the rotation. See that ball flaring? That's called track flare. And as the ball goes down the lane, that track migrates, and that's due to the core. Basically, it's an object that rotates around an axis, but then that core makes it wobble off axis. There you go. He liked it for good reason. <laughs> good shot there. 21 miles an hour. That ball's cooking down lane. I thought it was interesting, Randy, what he said to Kimberly in the pre-match interview. That he was hoping that the straighter is greater strategy would work to really hurt the other bowlers in their path to the pocket. But Sam hasn't worked. It, it really hasn't. I think Sam's far enough away from that spot. Wow. Looks for the turkey, Go. six frame, comes to 22, four pin. That urethane ball is getting sensitive now for Chris. A little firm on that right lane when he left the 2A. I thought it was pretty impressive that he threw that plastic spare ball straight at the 2A, covered it with no problem. But it's starting to get a bit sensitive now. Go. He's frustrated because Randy, he's in a big mm. hole to the one-hander from down under. It's not Belmonte tonight. The story is Sam Cooley from Australia, inching closer to his first career PBA Tour title tonight in Tampa. Back in the World Series of Bowling, Cheetah Championship. Sam Cooley on a four-bagger has a 33-pin lead. Saturday, April 3rd, MLB is back as the Braves face Bryce Harper and the Phillies and the reigning champion Dodgers take on the Rockies all on FS1 of the Fox Sports app. I'm kind of surprised that Bryce is still there. What a superstar. No matter where he plays. That trophy on the line. Strike track powered by Kia, Randy, tonight. All right, so obviously Cooley's uh, using reactive resin and Prather using non-reactive. So you can see the difference already. But look how straight Prather's going. Cooley's ball actually goes to the outside of the line that Prather is playing and then all the way back. But I mean, some incredible differences in numbers. And it just goes to show you that there's a couple different ways to attack this Cheeto oil pattern. Six frame, Sam Cooley. Trying to balloon the lead here to 43 pins. 
I think two of the biggest shots he's ever thrown in his life coming up right here. Totally agree. Out of the commercial break, it's never easy, especially with a big lead, especially when you're trying to win your first career PBA Tour title. How will he respond to the moment? Oh, man. It's all about 10 pin, Randy. Uh, get it right. It's not that hard. Well, I, I don't know, Sam. From here, it looked pretty good, man. Look at that wrist just absolutely good underneath and cupped. And then he just unloads it into the floor. A lot of power that man creates. Now, keep your head in it, cover the spare. Back to the left lane. No problem. Six year pro, 29 years old, never won on tour. Is this his night? Came close at a major, but that was five years ago. It's a lot closer now. Left lane, Randy, you talked about how important that was. Well, he saw what Marshall Kent did on that lane the game before, and, and then he comes out of the gate and does the very same thing. And so for me, it was, all right, well, how's he going to handle that? And the, the answer to that question is he's handled it brilliantly since the first frame. Um, he just said, you know what? You just got to get up and get it to the spot down lane to the right. That's what he's done ever since. Seventh for Prather works on a spare and a big strike in the right lane. Yeah, and so what, right now what Prather's trying to do is give Cooley something to think about. And that's by doubling up right here. And any little thought that he could put in Cooley's head that, it's, that Prather still has a chance is what he's going to try to do. And he, the only way he can do that is by striking here in the eighth frame. If he does not strike here in the eighth frame, his max score would then be... I believe 217. <gasps> you said earlier, strikeout mentality, right? I mean, pretty much. Strike train. Big one here. Left Go. lane, Prather wants it. it. No help on the four. Somehow it stands. Big non strike. He just doesn't have that trap shot now where it gets in or, or checks just a little early. And now it's going high. And he knows it. And, and now it, he knows he's in a little bit of trouble for the first time because he really throws this shot nice. But it digs in just a hair too much, and he leaves that four pin. I mean, this thing almost went. But now it's time for Sam Cooley to step up and do what professional athletes do, and that's perform during clutch time. Yes, he did. That was clutch. A beautiful shot when he needed it. When he wanted it, working on a strike, Prather didn't double up, and this just increases the, increases the lead. And I mean, that is pretty sexy right there. Millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why Fox Sports and Good Sports are restoring play for kids and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Text play to the number on your screen to help keep kids in the game.
One re rack left for Cooper. Ninth frame. 52 oh, pin yes. lead. You better believe it. Sam Cooley's cooking. Sam Cooley. Cooler than a polar bear's feet right there. That may have just won him his first ever PBA title. So emotional with us in our discussion about what he's been through over the last year. Passing of his mom, going back to Australia, having trouble getting back in the United States because of COVID. Got to get special exemption. A letter from Commissioner Tom Clark of the PBA Tour helped his cause, as did Jason Belmonte. And the emotions are starting to overflow here for Sam Cooley. I mean, it's just, it's just mathematics now. It's it's all but over. I mean, the only thing. Yep, and now it's definitely over. The only thing that would have stopped Cooley is if he would have thrown it in the gutter. And I'm sure if he just needed pins, he would have thrown it straight down the middle. The one in the ninth frame clincher for a man that has been through so much over the last year. What a performance. I mean, what a performance. I wasn't going to try to make it. I do. Enjoy the moment, man. Thanks. Chris Prather, class act, steps aside to allow Sam Cooley to enjoy this. Yeah, it was a classy move there. Now, step aside and let this man have the limelight for the first time ever. That's right, hit it. That, good for you, Sam. Good for you. Ten pin up. Sam Koo, as we saw, has done it. He's won his first career PBA Tour title. And he comes here at the World Series of Bowling and the Cheetah Championship tonight. What a moment for this Australian star. A tribute to Donna. Marshall Kent, Anthony Simonson, Chris Brather, all superstars of the PBA Tour, stood in his way. <laughs> this guy was just too good tonight. down the middle. Sam Cooley is a champion of the PBA Tour. Go get that trophy, Sam. He's the winner of the 2021 PBA Cheetah Championship. A Thank night to remember advice. for Sam Cooley. Um, Unbelievable. Sam Cooley has done it here in Tampa. Time to celebrate. He makes history his first ever PBA title. Comes tonight in Tampa, Florida. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Mortgage rates are historically low. Save money at rate.com today. And by Kia, introducing the all-new Sorento, the world's first storytelling machine. 247-185, the PBA Cheetah Championship. Win goes to Sam Cooley from Mount Warrigal, Australia. Randy averaged a... 243 in three games, 225, 258, and 247 in the championship match win over Chris Brather. Impressive. And 
This is why we cover live sports. It's emotional moments like this. It means so much to these great professional athletes yeah. to win with so much at stake. Well, I, I think the one thing that, that we should bring up is how many international players have won their first title at the World Series of Bowling. We're talking Oscu Palerma, Don Barrett, Stu Williams, Jesper Svensson, and now you can add Sam Cooley to that list. Truly the World Series of Bowling. Sam now joined by Kimberly. Thanks, Dave. Sam, you were visually emotional out there on the lanes and in our pre-show interviews. You said that if you won today, you were going to dedicate this to someone. Who was that and why? <laughs> it's really hard to say right now. Um, yeah, my mom, she died of cancer about a year ago. So this is her. I can see that this is a huge moment for you. And I know that you wanted this for her as well. And you should be very proud. You bowled amazing out there today. But I have to ask, I knew that you wanted to win this for your mom. How were you able to stand in the moment and just keep all of that aside? I just had to keep going through the same process that I've been doing since the start of today. Uh, Matt and all the other Storm guys, they helped me out. Just kept saying, just keep going with the process. That's all you can do. And there was times where during the match around halfway, I started thinking, those thoughts of winning came in my head. But I knew if I kept thinking like that, there was going to be a way for me to let Chris back in. So I just tried to reset my mind, which is only think about what got me here. And this is where the results are. Well, Sam, today you walk away as a PBA Tour champion. Congratulations. Thank you. Tomorrow night, guaranteed rate PBA Tour continues again. Live in primetime FS1 at 8 Eastern. Continuing coverage of the World Series of Bowling with the PBA Chameleon Championship. So far, Dory winning in his home center. And then the doubles championship, Prather, Andrew Anderson. And tonight, what a story. From Australia, Sam Cooley, for the first time in his career, is a PBA Tour champion. Now for Randy Peterson, EJ Tackett, our guest analyst, did a great job. Kimberly Pressler and the entire crew. It's Dave Ryan saying so long for now from Tampa, Florida. See you tomorrow night on FS1 at 8 Eastern as we continue coverage of the World Series of Bowl. You've been watching the PBA on FS1.